And we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to be continuing the 4.1 story. And as always, hello from Mifri. So we just finished the dungeon called the Drowned City of Scala. And we are here with Aaron Vold at um, 3233 in the locks. So let's talk to him. The quest is called The Butcher's Blood. So Aaron Vold is still grinning at Alphanode's discomfort. So, all jesting aside, we must tell people the good news, and I think Lee's should be the first. Seconded, there is to be a meeting of representatives from across Alamigo, so she is sure to be in the city. Shall we seek her out? Why not? Why not? Uh, cool. Let's see, where are we going? This way. I've got a flying bear. Only in MMOs can you say phrases like, I'm flying through the desert on a flying bear, and it makes sense. Here's Lee's. At least they're doing more voice acting, generally. So, oh, you three look pleased with yourselves. What have you been up to? freeway. So I'm glad you asked Lise and I'm pretty sure you're going to like the answer dot dot dot. They don't need the grisly details on this stream. She's like really interesting. Tell me more. You're, you're joking. <laughs> the Mad King's Trove? I thought it was a myth. So did plenty of people but they didn't have Mithri and Alphanode in their party. The credit for finding Git should really go to them. As for what to do with it all, I vote that it go towards alleviating the suffering of Alamigo's poor. Gods, if there's as much as you say, Orenvold did not exaggerate, I assure you. We could not hope to carry even a fraction of it on our own. I have taken the liberty of sketching out a rough map of the ruins. If you will assemble a squad of your most trusted freedom fighters, they should be able to follow the route to where the treasure lies. I wonder if Golemold is going to get wind of this and then just steal all the treasure from themselves. Understood. I'll make sure every coin is accounted for. And that goes for the spending of it as well. Thank you. Oh, there is one other thing. When the time comes to draw up a plan for disturbing the spoils, I would ask you to consult Alphanode. I don't have a head for details. I'm not educated. I see that simply handing out sacks of gill won't solve everything. But... I couldn't rightly tell you what to do instead. Oh, I know that feeling. I'd welcome any advice you could give us, Alphanode. Of course, I shall be at your disposal. Commander, we've got a problem. Deep breaths, tell me what happened. A mob gathered outside headquarters and they've started making demands. You best come and see yourself. I have a feeling that this treasure is going to be taken. And it won't go to the poor. Step back, all of you! Like hells we will! We know who you've got in there! We're not leaving till you hand her over! Bring her out! Bring her out! What's going on? Someone let slip about Fedora. It's true then. The bitch really is in there. I knew it. I bloody knew it. We demand vengeance! Bring her out! Today we butcher the butcher! Butcher the... Come on, you don't mean that! We'd be no better than the Imperials if you'd all just calm down! Calm down! That monster and her thrice damned skulls dragged my man from our home and beat him to death in the street! Aye, and my dad! That bitch has spilt enough blood to fill a lock! We all know her crimes! She's a traitor and a murderer. 
How many of your resistance friends have died at her hands, eh? And here you are, protecting her! So that's what all the fuss is about. Oh, Raban. That's good timing. Hearken to me, brothers and sisters of Alamigo. Hey, who's this? That... That's the bull of Alamigo. My friends, you are not alone in your anger, your grief, your despair. For it is mine as well. That gnawing pain in your breast, it is enough to bring an old bull to his knees. But I ask you, brothers and sisters, to think not only of the family and friends who were cut down before your very eyes, but to think also of the ones who were abducted, the ones who may yet live. Where were they taken? What became of them? These questions demand answers. I share your thirst for justice, for vengeance. I've got one arm, for goodness sake. But we will gain only fleeting satisfaction if we give in to our base appetites. We will never know the truth. Now is the time that we, the people of Alamigo, must decide what manner of nation we will build for ourselves and for generations yet unborn. When they look to our example, will they see a people who held fast to their principles? Or one who cast them aside when tried? I say to you, it is our responsibility to give these prisoners a fair trial that they might answer to all of Alamigo. The Galleons called us savages, and I'll be damned if we prove them right. I know you're right, I do, but I can't. Interesting. Okay. So, my thanks, Roban. Listening to that anger, I could feel myself being swept away. It is a difficult tide to stem. It was the same rage which brought us to our feet and carried us to victory. But now the war is over, so we, all the unspent fury is being channeled into vengeance. Aye, it's not just here, uh, we've reports of mobs forming all over. They've been targeting folk known to have cooperated with the Garleans. It starts with the insults most often, and sorry, then someone picks up a stone. Some industrious souls even fought to seek out the graves of Xernos and his officers. It was grim. I want to build a country where everyone, regardless of race or origin, can live side by side in peace. But maybe the time isn't right. Maybe people just aren't ready. Will people ever be ready? But that doesn't mean I'm not going to try. The representatives will be here soon, and I'll be damned if I'm going to give up before I've even begun. Who are these representatives exactly? Oh, village elders, refugee leaders, and the like. It wouldn't be right for us to dictate the nation's future on our own. So we planned a summit of sorts. We've even invited the Ananta and the Kikern to participate. Alamigo stands at a crossroads, and this meeting will decide which path it takes. The matter of Fordola's sentence cannot be suffered to disrupt proceedings. 
Then let's execute her and be done with it. She herself asked to be put to death. Now go, I already explained why we wouldn't do that. Sending her to the gallows might satisfy people right now, but where would it end? Should we round up everyone who collaborated and everyone who didn't resist? There would be no one left, and we'd be no better than Theodoric and Xenos. Begging your pardon, but might I be allowed to speak with Fordola? Only I caught a glimpse of her past, a moment of it anyway, during the fight. She's done terrible things, aye, unforgivable things, but in some ways she's a victim of circumstance in which she was born, and that's something I can understand. Alright, speak with the prison guard when you're ready, and I'll come and join you. I want to talk to her too. I return to my other duties then. We've barely begun to investigate the facility where they gave Fordola her powers. Be fairly warned, friends, she will test you. Don't let your emotions colour your judgement when she does. Okay, so let's do this. So, you've the commander's permission to enter then. Yep. Really shouldn't bring weapons into the chamber, but whatever. Well, well, well. So many visitors. Come to have a good laugh, have you? Or do you mean to put me out of my misery? To finish what you started? It's about bloody time. That's not why we're here, no. Do you remember what I said? How I promised you you'd live long enough to see us win our freedom. Well, I meant it. And not to mock you either. You're wasting your time. All of this is pointless. There's no reason to keep me alive and you know it. I killed your men. I killed my men. And you know what my only regret is? That I didn't kill you when I had the chance! That's a lie and you know it! You think we can't tell what you're trying to do? That we're blind? Yeah, you're a fool, but you're not stupid. You're ruthless. Relentless. You'd give up anything and everything to get what you want. You didn't come this far, climbing over the bodies of your own brothers and sisters just to piss it all away! I see you, Fedora. I see you for what you are. Interesting. Is this for Dollar as a kid? Dola, we mustn't be late. The Imperial Viceroy will be attending today's banquet. Ooh. All right. Father, what slot guy is like? Is he nice? Are you friends? There you go again with all your questions. Lord Gaius is a great and honourable man who looks after all of Alamigo. He's very busy, and if we don't hurry, we'll miss our chance to see him. F 
filthy tinnet lovers. <clears throat> Say what? Father, what did that man call us? The little tinhead lover doesn't know what she is, eh? A traitor, sweetheart. A backstabbing bitch who gladly betray her kith and kin to gnaw on what few scraps the Imperials deign to toss her. Like your bastard father and whore mother. That's not true! My parents are good people! They've never done anything like that! Oh, but they were quick to help themselves and their bitch spawn, weren't they? You're just as guilty as them. Fadola! Traitors! Soldiers of the Imperial Army are under no obligation to intervene in the disputes of arms. We're citizens! We have rights! Ah. I'm scared! It's all right. It's all right. They don't understand, but they'll see in time. They'll see that this is the only way to survive. Traitors! Traitors! Savages have their fun. They'll be more compliant once they've tied themselves out. Fadola, please! You already have citizenship! Why would you want to become a soldier? Oh, gods! What have you done to your face? Forgotten it already, have you? I'm honoring Father's memory. Makes sense. By telling the world that you know better than a common savage. Am I though, mother? Are any of us? Can't you see? Citizenship means nothing to them. If you're not a pure blood Galleon, you're no different from any other savage. So I'll play the part. I'll join the Legion, and I'll make them respect me. And when the mob see that, they'll think twice before throwing their stones. Ansfrid, Rudolf, Emlyn. It's time. It'll be hard. Humiliating. They'll try to break us. Send us crawling back to our own kind. No matter what, we'll bleed for them, die for them if we have to. We'll do whatever it takes to be free!
So, you mean to play the part one last time, eh? The unrepentant traitor whose death will serve to unite the people? Shut up. You had every chance to kill yourself. Fashion a noose from your clothes. Wait for the guards to leave you alone long enough to slip it over your neck. I said shut up! Oh, but then it would have all been for nothing, wouldn't it? Whatever it takes. That's what you said. Been in my head, have you? Had a little peek at my past. And what? A few stolen memories tell you everything you need to know, do they? Don't you dare patronize me! You don't know a goddamn thing about the life I've led! The bastards that killed him. The bastards that let it happen. My father deserved better! I swore I'd do whatever it took to make them pay! Interesting, interesting. For anyone. The things they've done to you. The lies. The betrayal. The endless fighting. Yet there you stand. Unbroken. How? Why? Well, you know, drink lots of water, get a good night's sleep. You know, it's, it's easy to manage. You know why you saw? For those I have lost, for those I can yet save, because I choose to. Damn you. Damn you all. You still have time, Fordola. Think about how you want to spend it. Let's go. Okay, let's complete. We'll get the measure of our reach orchestral roll. Music for Garlean Territorial Anthem for Garabania and surrounding states. The measure of our reach. Interesting. Well, that was a good cutscene. And we actually feel a level of empathy towards Fodola. Okay, so next quest is called Echoes of an Echo. Lease is lost in four. So I don't know that we solved anything exactly, but we've given Fordola something to think about at least. Ah, and I found something new to think about too. I don't know about you, Mifri, but the visions only come up every now and then. From the way Fordola kept wincing though, I feel she's feelings... Sorry, I get the feeling she's having them almost all the time. That's a lot of bad memories to deal with. I wonder, could there be some fundamental difference between one of those who was born with the Echo and one who has been artificially imbued with it? Well, 
The Immortal Flames have been scouring the research facility ever since the Liberation. There's a chance they might have some answers for us. General Alden's there overseeing the investigation. Let's go and pay him a visit, shall we? Okay, so let's go. Can't believe this bear can fly. Lol. So General Alden is his side eye. Right? Will you be joining him? Yes. Okay. So what what news? You spoke with Fodola, I take it? Yes, as expected, she didn't say very much, but it wasn't a total waste of time. Arunvold noticed something odd about her. He thinks she might be having visions almost constantly, which is not how the Echo normally works. Have you found anything here which might explain why it's so different for her? Hmm. We've been hard-pressed just to organize the research materials, let alone study them. To be frank, I'd welcome the Scion's expert assistance if you have time to lend a hand. Cool. So let's use our scientific brain. This is, these look like the flipping pods in Final Fantasy 7. The ones like the monsters that were super infused with materia. The device in which Krill was held seems even more ominous now that you know its purpose. The surrounding pods are marked subject, sorry, supply subject. While well, this one bears the label Master Subject. The Ironworks received a request from the Alliance to analyze these devices. And I've been recording everything of interest. Did you notice the labeling? All the pods are designed to drain the Aether of the occupant. Save that one right there. Unlike the others, the interior has been fitted with an array of sensors to measure etheric waveforms. To what purpose, however, I couldn't tell you. Cool. Go higher up. Ah, this. Interesting. Okay, let's talk to this flame investigator. So, so many bodies, every one of them is a victim of these experiments. If you show any signs of external injury. From what we've been able to determine, they perish from forcible Aether extraction. Such a miserable way to die. Okay. Let's talk to Roban. So I know little and less of science, and any light you can shed on this facility's operations would be much appreciated. Mifri, shall we start with you? Stuff and blah, etc. Taken in combination with the testimonies of Krill and Fancred, I do begin to see exactly what the Imperials were attempting here. The enhancement procedure entailed infusing a single candidate with Aether siphoned from a multitude of supply subjects. As for the master subject, in this case Krill, the patterns of her etheric activity would provide the model upon which they would artificially engineer the candidate's aura. In other words, they were trying to recreate Krill's echo? I believe so, which would explain our prisoner's present state. Krill is possessed of an unrivaled ability to hear the whispers of the soul. And it seems probable <laughs> that the procedure endangered the same acute sensitivity in Fordola. The soldiers who guard Fordola, many of them lost friends and family to the skulls, and there's a sentry at her door day and night. Um, if she can't help sensing their thoughts and seeing their past,
But you don't just see their past, you live it. All the emotions, all the pain. Imagine what it'd do to you. you would never be the same again. Indeed, as you may recall, uh, your sail was completely transformed by a single glimpse of Resvalga's past. For Dola has been forced to experience the agony of those who lived, so lives she destroyed. The guilt must be unbearable. That explains her request to be executed. It sounds to me like a kind of justice. Regardless, she can suffer on for now. She... Sorry, we have more pressing matters to consider. If the results of these experiments have been relayed back to Gala Mode, there will be naught to stop the Empire from repeating the trick. They could give the Echo to anyone, to an entire Legion. We must be ready, we must learn all we can for these godforsaken procedures. And Fadola remains our best source of information. She'll not be getting her wish, not yet. Right. Uh, keep faith, lass. If you're to convince others to follow you, you must believe what you're telling them. People will respond to passion, but not if it's feigned. I understand. Thank you, General. We should leave the flames to it. Let's go. It's a lot more interesting than I thought it would be, to be honest. So I go without, sorry, I go looking for answers about the Echo and end up getting schooled by Roban. Yet more evidence that I don't know what I'm doing. It's no wonder people listen to him and not me. General Aldrin is a veteran of countless campaigns, Lise. You cannot compare yourself to a commander of his experience. I know, but I also know that I couldn't have convinced that mob to give up and go home. It makes me realize how much we rely on his authority and how much I still have to learn. I wonder what he'll do when everything here is settled. I mean, it's his homeland. After going to the trouble of winning it back, might he not want to stay? It is a quandary which countless refugees now face, to continue the life they built in Uldar or start again in the land of their birth. Mifri, a moment. I am newly returned from Uldar with a message from the Sultana. Her grace desires an audience with you. She understands that you have responsibilities here, but asks that you visit the palace at your earliest convenience. Well, I must away and attend to our business. Until next time, my friends. I salute you. An audience with the Sultana, depending on the nature of her consultation, this might be the perfect opportunity to inquire about the General's future plans. Yes, we'd all like to know about those, Alphanode. Not everyone's as comfortable um, interrogating royalty as you. Take no notice of him, Mifri. Complete. I do wonder if, like, Roban and the Sultana are the parents, and Pippin is the, is the kid. Would explain why he's a Lollafell. Or Sultana's strings. So Alphano's thoughts appear to have turned from adventure to administration. Well, the question of how to put the Mad King's treasure to good use shows no sign of answering itself. Shall we be about it, involved? I'm at your beck and call. And I should be getting back to my own tasks. I'll organize a squad to head down into the ruins. And then start preparing for the big meeting. Oh, send Nanamo my regards, Mifri. And ours too, if you please. We shall see you on your return. Okay. So let's go to Uldar. My god, we can teleport right there. If it was World of Warcraft, that would make you run. K. 
Okay. So I'm gonna assume we have to go to the Royal Chamber. I could be wrong, but... Whatever. Okay, this way. Ah, oh, we're on the right way. Nice. So, my lady, it was an honor to face you in the tournament. Since that day, I have spent my every spare moment in the practice yard, striving to attain some fraction of your skill with the blade. Ah, uh, forgive me, you are here for your audience with the Sultana. Please proceed. Thank you for answering my summons in these most interesting times. You have been busy. Ooh. The yeah, like in it. The of Alamigo will have far-reaching consequences, and there is a matter upon which I would seek your counsel. I speak of Rauban and his future. know the tale of his rise from penniless refugee to member of the syndicate and general of the immortal flames yet though he has come to call Ulda home it will never be his homeland he is a son of Alamigo and now that she is free I thought it only a matter of time before he sought my leave to return to her indeed I had resigned myself to his loss so, Mifri, do you want to be the new Raban? I was greatly surprised to hear him speak so lightly of handing over the reins in Alamigo and retaking his place at my side. I will welcome him with open arms, of course. He is my most trusted advisor and my dearest friend. But I have known the man a long time, and beneath that steely gaze, I spied a flicker of doubt. Whether Rauban chooses to remain in Uldar or return to Alamigo, I only wish that he do so with a heart unburdened by guilt or regret. Yet, how can he freely make such a choice, knowing how much I depend on him? It is past time that I learned to discharge my duties as a Sultana alone. I must go forth and see my realm with my own eyes, and hear the wind with my own ears. Might I have your company for a brief adventure? Wonderful! Allow me a moment to change into something a touch less conspicuous, and I will join you outside. So, <laughs> you're gonna afford more than one outfit, whatever, man. Okay, let's go to the quicksand. We can teleport right there. Let's go. Okay, we go. Adventure is good. Righty ho. There she is. So, perchance you remember Lilra, the merchant daughter. This is a persona I assume when I venture beyond the palace walls to observe my subjects unnoticed. Ordinarily, uh, Papa Shan would accompany me, but for this particular outing, I need an advisor, not a minder. And that is why I requested your company. Over the course of your many adventures, you may have met people from all walks of life. In every corner of yours here, and I would make use of your worldly experience. Now, let us be on our way. Our first destination is Stone's Throw, just beyond the Gate of Nold. Okie dokie. Is this the Gate of Nold? Yes, it is. Wow. 
I don't know if they've added more weather effects to this game or if I've just been away that long. I can't remember. Uh, look upon this procession of tattered tents. These refugees camp in squalor at the mercy of the elements and fallen and <laughs> sorry, fana lands predators both. The city's mighty walls offer safety, but the streets overflow with people as is. And unlike, sorry, unless blessed by the hand of Nald himself, no refugees could ever hope to afford a dwelling in Uldar. Twenty years have passed since the fall of Alamigo, and five since the calamity. Yet the plight of the poor has grown more desperate, not less. As Sultana, the blame falls upon me. You have done your best, your grace. Your hands have been tied, your grace. You've done your best. So, then my best has not been good enough. Shall we press on? I would follow the road to the unholy air. Okay, let's go. Right, where are we going? Oh wow, long way to go. So let's teleport to Blackbrush and then we can run to the east. The thing is, like, people tend to tell me that the story quests only take a couple of hours. But I'm assuming a lot of the times people are like spam clicking their way through it and not absorbing all the story. Whereas, as you well know if you've watched my channel for a while, I read every single word of the story. I get the, the most for my money, as they say. Oh, there she is. So, it was here in this unholy, remarkable place, unremarkable place, that my mother and father met their doom. I was but a child at the time. My parents were returning from an inspection of our interest in Eastern Fanalan when an untimely rock slide crushed their carriage. To this day, it is not certain if the incident was simple misfortune or an expertly planned assassination. Roban once offered to reopen the investigation and bring me the truth he assumed I most surely craved, but I refused. Even if parents' deaths were orchestrated by the monetarists, we could only have brought their hirelings to justice. The true villains, those who plotted to put me on the throne as a biddable puppet, were ever beyond our reach. Thus did I plan to strip the merchants of their power and place our nation in the hands of its citizens, quite unaware of the consequences my actions would have for you and yours. I shudder to think how many uh, goodly souls paid the price for my naivety. But I am no longer a child reciting words with witless obedience, and I will not be used as a pawn in the monetarist's damnable games. Forgive me my outburst. You are one of the few people to whom I feel I can speak my mind. Come, let's return to Aldar and visit the Colosseum. I did always wonder if we'll actually get to see the top of that rock structure. Is like, Or is it going to be forever out of reach? Okay, let's go back. Just so you know, if any of you are new to the game. If you activate a one-time password, you can nominate one teleport to forever be free. That's other than your return point. So my return point is Gridania, and I can teleport to Uldar for free. Which is convenient. Okay, let's go to the Colosseum. Okay, to there. Okay, we're almost there now. Jumpy, jumpy, and jumpy, jump. Okay, here she is. From the moment I became Sultana, I found myself thrust into an endless parade of document signing and ceremonies. For years, I simply signed where I was told to sign, and sat where I was told to sit, blissfully oblivious to what any of it meant. Yet, one good thing did come from the ignominious chapter of my life, for it was during an official visit to the Colosseum that I first met Roban. 
The match I had been invited to attend was not all what I expected. They had pitted the Bull of Alamigo against some dozen or so rival gladiators. Blinkered though I was, I would not stand for so obvious an injustice and demanded to see a fair fight, one man against another, and my royal wish was duly granted. It was not until later that I learned of the gambling ring which had arranged to, for Roban to die on the sands that day. Regardless, my intervention meant that Roban had but a single opponent to dispatch, which he duly did, and when he knelt before me to receive the winner's purse, he swore he would one day offer me his blade in service. Surrounded as I was by liars and manipulators, I confess I dismissed it as a pleasant piece of theater. But as you know, Roban is a man of his word. Though it took him another five years of fighting in the blood sands, he amassed a fortune so great as to buy not only his freedom, but a seat on the syndicate. And then I ha had my blade. Echo. Oh, that was easy. Actually, hilarious. Promise made. So you have, and in turn, so too shall I keep mine. With your winnings, you have become one of the six most wealthy souls in all Ulda, and so, as tradition dictates, Raub and Aldin, you have earned yourself a seat on the Syndicate. May your new station garner you still greater glories. I am honored, Your Grace. And vow to serve with every fiber of my being from this day to my last. Long live the Sultana, and long live Ulda! She likes some grizzly, doesn't she? So words cannot well express what that man means to me. There are others who care deeply for my well-being, of course. Papa Shan's love for me is that of a grandsire for his grandchild. But upon matters of governance, I cannot turn to bodyguards and maidservants for counsel. Roban, with the authority of his syndicate position, was the first sword I could wield. Um, his was the only edge which could cut the strings that bound me. Okay, next. Okay, next quest. A Sultana's Duty. So, Nanamo seems lost in thoughts of the past. We must make haste. My absence will not go unnoticed by the Sultan's one for long, and there are other places I would visit. To the Arzanef Ossery. Okay. Is that the Black Mages Guild? Or is that the crypt? Let me see. That's Black Major Skill. Okay.
So when the Klamath threatened, uh, Raban led the Alliance forces into battle on the plains of Cartano, and I remained here. I prayed with all my heart that Archon Louis Soir would have the power to rouse the Twelve. Since that day I have made a custom of visiting this shrine during each of my little excursions. Here I seek the blessing of Fal, reflect upon my choices and ask myself if I am fulfilling my duties as Sultana. You are rightly ce celebrated as a champion because you have led the line in a hundred battles for the good of Eorzea. In much the same way, I believe the measure of a monarch lies in how she leads her people in times of adversary. Uh, sorry, adversity. I am to be a sultana worthy of the name, if I cannot turn a blind eye to the troubles facing Uldar. I have chosen my path, Mifri. With Alamigo now freed from Imperial chains, I finally see a way to aid the refugees. I'll just send them home. Already many displaced Alamegans seek to begin the long trek home, and as you well know, our artisans' school shall be waiting to accept any who wish to learn new trades. Realistically, however, it will take years for such training to yield tangible benefits, but we do not have years. These people will need shelter and employment if they are to survive, and this time the old on treasury shall provide. Precisely where and how to allocate the necessary funds is, of course, another question. Uh, might you ask a member of the syndicate for advice? Why not seek the advice of one who employs refugees? A wise suggestion. Mayhap a visit to the gold sorcerer is in order. Its proprietary, sorry, proprietor is a member of the syndicate, and he is one of the few who pays refugees a fair wage. I wonder, are you acquainted with Godbert Mandeville? Yep, very a bit too much. Then I need not explain his eccentric nature. Let us make our way to the landing and I will see word is sent to the gold saucer. Godbert should be only too glad to receive us. Now Godbert's a madman. Okay, next. We. So can we go to the airship landing directly, or... Let's go to the Adventurer's Guild and then run. Okay. Yeah, so whether you go to the Aetherite or the Adventurer's Guild, it's the same running distance. It's nice seeing this all decorations for Christmas, but I'm very sad to see such an empty server. Like, there's no one here. Where is everyone? <laughs> Unless everyone's like just doing PvP or something, which I doubt. Okay, airship landing. Yes. Uh, just remembered when I visited the, uh, you know, the in-game offices of Square Enix. I didn't cry. It's a lie. I have ridden aboard a public airship before, but this shall be my first visit to the Gold Saucer. I must confess to some excitement. Kill. So, speak to an animo at the Gold Saucer. Gold Saucer. Let's do it. Go. Whee. Blood. This song is annoying, it's annoying, annoying, annoying. This song is annoying, it's annoying, annoying, annoying. It's annoying, it's annoying, 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 annoying. This song is annoying. Okay, it's Nanamo. So, I had heard descriptions of its splendor, yet I never dreamed it would be so bright and inviting. Uh, no, I couldn't possibly. We did not come here to filter away the royal coin. Godbert will be expecting us. Come, let us head directly to the lounge and ignore these gaudy temptations. Okay. So where is the lounge? There. So the Wonder Square West.
I remember when I first visited the Gold Saucer, I was worried that I'll literally never leave. Okay. So, I like the gold Godbert statue. Lul. I believe this is where we met Master Mandeville. Uh, shall we sit while we await his coming? Sure. I wonder how many quests are left for 4.1. My apologies, Your Grace. I have kept you waiting. No apologies are necessary, God, but my request was sudden, and you were kind to make yourself available at such short notice. When my son's good friend and the Sultana herself come calling, there is no more important engagement. As to the purpose of my visit, I would have your thoughts on how the Crown might best aid the refugees residing in Fanalan. You are aware, I am sure, that many Alamegans displace sons and daughters long to return to their newly liberated homeland and you are also aware of how they will suffer without shelter and work to sustain them. I would use our nation's wealth to spare them that suffering. What advice have you uh, for me on the matter of how it might be best distributed? The unusual circumstances of our meeting and your grace's choice of companion would suggest to me a desire for an honest, unvarnished opinion. I shall give you one. My advice to you is stop. Uh, taxing Aldan's wealth to save Alamegan refugees is a terrible, terrible idea. You oppose my proposition? Most empathetically, I agree with your grace that the refugees must have the housing and employment, but what profit is there for Aldar in this arrangement? Profit? After all you have done for Girabania's displaced, I thought the very you the very last person to seek the benefit from their misfortune. Forgive me, Your Grace, but you appear to be laboring under a mis uh, apprehension. It is fine a fine endeavor to support one's fellow man. I fear, however, that your stance is one born of pity. Your intent is to save the refugees, is it not? For all our potential, we are indolent creatures by nature. If unconditional charity is all we know, then we begin to rely upon it, to expect it. And then we must consider Aldan's own poor and downtrodden. Should they hear of you spending the nation's coin, not to improve their lot, but to nurture the distant citizens of Alamigo, it is unlikely they will applaud your generosity. Surely it is not your grace's intention to foster new resentments, but to spread goodwill? Indeed, then any support I pledge to the refugees must promote self-sufficiency, whilst also serving the interests of the people of Aldar. Exactly. Uh, such an arrangement will create a far more equitable relationship with the returning Alamegans, even as it generates the revenue required to win the approval of your subjects. You have given me much to ponder, Master Mandeville. I thank you for your candor. Interesting point. I mean... Cool. I'm just going to quickly check. If the next quest is the last quest... It's not. So there's still more. So anyway, guys, I think that's a good time to end the episode so it doesn't drag on too long. So anyway, guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching. And as always, goodbye from me and goodbye from Mifri. Bye, guys.